Coming up next, it's O Canada, followed by Late Night Black and White on Cartoon Network. of Bonnetuck Bay, there lived a family of fisher folk by the name of Pruitt. There were seven of them, and they were the sole inhabitants of the place. They subsisted on canned corn, canned tomatoes, pressed duck, whole wheat bread, terrapin, rice krispies, crabs, cheese, queen olives, and homemade wild grape preserve. Once in a while, Pa Pruitt made some whiskey and they all had a drink. They liked the island and lived there from choice. In winter, when there wasn't much doing, they slept the clock around like so many bears. In summer, they dug clams and set off a few pinwheels and salutes on July 4th. No case of acute appendicitis had ever been known in the Pruitt household. And when a Pruitt had a pain in his side, he never even noticed whether it was the right side or the left side, but just hoped it would go away, and it did. One very severe winter, Bonnetuck Bay froze over, and the Pruitt family was marooned. They couldn't get to the mainland by boat because the ice was too thick, and they couldn't walk ashore because the ice was too treacherous. But inasmuch as no Pruitt had anything to go ashore for, except mail, which was entirely second class, the freeze-up didn't make any difference. They stayed indoors, kept warm, and ate well. And when there was nothing better to do, they played crokinole. The winter would have passed quietly enough had not someone on the mainland remembered that the Pruitts were out there in the frozen bay. passed around the county and finally reached the superintendent of state police. He immediately notified Pat Bay News and the United States Army. The Army got there first with three bombing planes from Langley Field, which flew low over the island and dropped packages of dried apricots and bouillon cubes, which the Pruitts didn't like much. The newsreel plane, smaller than the bombers and equipped with skis, arrived next and landed on a snow-covered field on the north end of the island. Meanwhile, Major Bulk, head of the state troopers, acting on a tip that one of the Pruitt children had appendicitis, arranged for a dog team to be sent by plane from Laconia, New Hampshire. 
also dispatched a squad of troopers to attempt a crossing of the bay. Snow began falling at sundown, and during the night, three of the rescuers lost their lives about half a mile from shore, trying to jump from one ice cake to another. The plane carrying the sled dogs was over southern New England when ice began forming on its wings. As the pilot circled for a forced landing, a large meat bone that one of the dogs had brought along got wedged in the socket of the main control stick, and the plane went into a steep dive and crashed against the side of a powerhouse, instantly killing the pilot and all the dogs and fatally injuring Walter Ringstead, 7, of 3452 Garden View Avenue, Stamford, Connecticut. Shortly before midnight, the news of the appendicitis reached the Pruitt House itself, when a chartered autogyro from Hearst's International News Service made a landing in the storm, and reporters informed Mr. Pruitt that his oldest boy, Charles, was ill and would have to be taken to Baltimore for an emergency operation. Mrs. Pruitt remonstrated, but Charles said his side did hurt a little, and it ended by his leaving in the gyro. Twenty minutes later, another plane came in, bearing a surgeon, two trained nurses, and a man from the National Broadcasting Company. And the second Pruitt boy, Chester, underwent an exclusive appendectomy in the kitchen of the Pruitt home over the Blue Network. This lad died later from eating dried apricots too soon after his illness. But Charles, the other boy, recovered after long convalescence and returned to the island in the first warm days of spring. He found things much changed. The house was gone, having caught fire on the third and last night of the rescue, when a flare dropped by one of the departing planes lodged in a bucket of trash on the piazza. After the fire, Mr. Pruitt had apparently moved his family into the emergency shed that the radio announcers had thrown up, and there they had dwelt under rather difficult conditions until the night the entire family was wiped out by drinking a 10% solution of carbolic acid that the surgeon had left behind and that Pa Pruitt had mistaken for grain alcohol. Barnatuck Bay seemed a different place to Charles. After giving his kin decent burial, he left the island of his nativity and went to dwell on the mainland. When I decide to go or to work up in the woods in North Ontario. And the unemployment officer, they send me through to the little epidemic with the survey crew. And the black flies, the little black flies, always the black fly, no matter where you go, I'll die with the black fly, picking my bones in North Ontario, I in North Ontario. 
the man Black Toby was the captain of the crew, and he said, I'm gonna tell you boys what they're gonna do. They want to build a power dam, we must find a way for to make the little app roll around the other way. With the black flies, the little black flies, always the black fly, no matter where you go, I'll die with the black fly, picking my balls in North Ontario, Ohio, in North Ontario. So we survey to the east, survey to the west, and we couldn't make our minds up how to do it best. Little Ab, little Ab, what shall I do? For I'm all going crazy with the survey crew and the black flies, little black flies. Always the black fly, no matter where you go, I'll die with the black fly. Picking my bones in North Ontario, Ohio, in North Ontario. Was black fly, black fly everywhere. A crawling in your whiskers, a crawling in your hair. Swimming in the soup, swimming in the tea. The devil took the black fly, let me be. Black fly, little black fly. Always the black fly, no matter where you go. I'll die with the black fly. Picking my bones in North Ontario, Ohio, in North Ontario. The state of our morale was again pretty low with the flies warm. Heavy was hard to catch your breath. Just stuck it up and down the field. Talk unto yourself with the black flies. The black flies. Always the black fly, no matter where you go. I'll die with the black fly, picking my bones. And we're going to hear I owe, oh, I owe, and we're going to hear I owe. Well, now, the blue cook's name was Blind River Joe. If it hadn't been for him, we'd have never pulled through. Because he bound up our bushes and he kitted us for fun. And he let us us a bacon grease and balsam gum for the black Flies, the little black flies, always the black fly, no matter where you go, I'll die with the black fly, in my bones, and all thunder, I owe, I owe, and all thunder, I owe. And at last the job was over, Black Toby said we're through with the little Abitibi and the survey crew. It was a wonderful experience, and this I know. I'll never go again to North Ontario. Flies, the little black flies, always the black fly, no matter where you go. I'll die with the black fly, picking my bones in North Ontario, Ohio, in North Ontario. The black flies, the little black flies, always the black fly, no matter where you go. I'll die with the black fly, picking my bones in North Ontario. In North Ontario. Ugh. <laughs>